Hello everyone, it is a nice, lovely morning here in Canada and it is a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, welcome to this scholarship session. My name is Jose Miguel Capilla and with me I have my colleague Kuram Kam. Kuram, please, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi everyone, my name is Kuram and I am the International Recruitment Officer for Trent University and I am Miguel's colleague. Exactly, he's he's a, one of my one of my colleagues, and the great part about Kuram is that he's going to be in the chat answering some of the questions. Meanwhile, I am doing the presentation, and of course, questions that that relates more to the scholarship side, I'll be answering most of them live at the end of my presentation. So, if we don't answer right away, bear with us. Stay at the end. Most likely, either the question is going to be answered by the presentation, or if it's a little bit more specific, I will answer it myself. Okay, without any further ado, like I said before, I invite you to use the Q&A session to type any questions that you have, and I will answer them at the end of my presentation. And without any further ado, let's begin this session. Okay, so can I have some thumbs up if you can see my presentation? Oh, good, perfect. Alrighty, so this is the scholarships for international undergraduate international students presentation by me, Jose Miguel Capilla. Um, here, something that I want to point out is that these scholarships are only for undergraduate students. So once again, if you're a master, PhD, or postgraduate certificate students, unfortunately, this will not apply to you. If you are a master of postgraduate or PhD student, you should contact graduate at trainu.ca as they know all the process and all the scholarships available for their programs. Alrighty, in, before we talk about scholarships, let me talk a little bit about the budget, because I think that is the first thing that we need to know before we get into the most important part of the session. Right now, trend on the graduate tuition fee for this year is 24,250. Our tuition fee is the third lowest tuition fee among all universities in Ontario. And the fees include the university health insurance plan, bus pass, athletics fee, um, other students' fees. This also includes the cost of housing and meals, where it is dependent whether you live on residence or on campus or off campus, that's up to you. But keep in mind that that will switch and change how much you spend and how much you need to budget for. Uh, some examples of personal expenses are going out to the movies, way nights, cell phone bills, taco Tuesdays, whatever you want. Overall, for an undergraduate degree, it costs between 38,558 to 44,158 per year. So keep these numbers in back of your head. But the most important part is keep in mind that the tuition fee is 24,250. And then we have the ancillary fees, which when you sum everything is roughly 27,000. And now we are going to talk about the most important part of this session, scholarships. And let's, be, let's begin by saying that Trent is Ontario's top university for scholarship and bursaries. And here is the reason why we have scholarship exclusively for international students. And first, let me begin with scholarship for, for the first kind of scholarship, which is our entrance scholarship. That means that all students entering Trent are automatically considered for the international entrance scholarship. We want to reward your hard work at school. Starting at 80%, the higher your average is, the more money you will receive. Also, for those of you who are an IB student, you will receive an additional one-time $1,000 scholarship. So on top of your international entry scholarship, you will receive $1,000 extra. So keep this in mind. For this scholarship, you don't need to do anything. You automatically, you are automatically assessed. But for this, these are the big scholarships that we have because trend offers a range of scholarships that you can apply for if you are starting with us in September. The three international scholarship and awards are awarded to exceptional international students who demonstrate outstanding academic achievement, community service involvement, leadership potential, and financial need. These scholarships are renewable for up to four years during your undergraduate degree. And you need to apply by February 15, and I repeat, you need to apply by February 15, and you will receive up to $27,000, which will cover your tuition and ancillary fees. Just imagine 
if you receive one of these big scholarships, all you need to do is to pay for your cost of living. Meanwhile, you're studying at Trent University. And as a fun fact, I came from my home country with one of these scholarships, and I am here sharing the knowledge with you and motivating you for this life-changing opportunity. Because believe me, it is possible to get one of these scholarships. So what about how you get eligible to apply for these scholarships? So in order to be eligible for this scholarship, you need to be, first of all, an international student who is going to be studying in Canada on a study permit. The second thing that you need to do is apply for an undergraduate program at Trent University for fall 2022 intake. Then you need to enter Trent University from a recognized university, school, college, or other university. And of course, you need to meet the university admission requirements, including general and degree-specific requirements and English language admission standards. In other words, you need to be eligible for admission and you need to be accepted. Then you need to demonstrate superior academic achievement. This is very important. And you need to have demonstrated leadership throughout community service or excellence in the arts, sports, or other areas of individual achievement. You also need to have demonstrated financial need. And the most important one, complete and submit the online trend international scholarship and award application by February 15, 2022. So everything looks fantastic. Everything looks fine. I love these scholarships. The big question here is, how do you apply? And here is the process, my friend. The first, the very, very first thing that you need to do is to apply to Trent. And please, we strongly advise you to apply before February 1st, because it can take up to two weeks for us to process your application and to give you access to our system. This is very important because our application lives within our system that is called My Trend. So the very first thing that you want to do is apply now and apply before February 1st. Then the second thing that you need to do is to complete the application form that is located in My Trend Portal. Inside the application, you will find two 500 word essays. The first one is a statement of purpose in which we want to know you, your academic aspirations, career goals, how Trend can support you to achieve those goals. So we want you to explain all of that. And the second essay is it has the option to be an essay or you can do it a three minute video. And let me tell you something. As part of the scholarship committee, we strongly, strongly advise you to do the video. It will give you um, a better chance in your scholarship application. So in this video, you will need to tell us more about your passions, interests, community involvement and future ambitions. We want to know you better. We want to know who is the student behind all these goals and achievements, okay? And then the next thing that you need to do is to submit two recommendation letters. We advise that these recommendation letters come from your professors, uh, two professors that maybe know you fairly well. They are critic and they know you fairly, fairly well. Or it can be maybe a professor and your current employer. Both can work. But remember, you need two, okay? Up to you how you want it, just send us two. Here's a common question. What if the professors, they don't want to give you the cover letters for you? Then what you need to do is send, they send, well, to the professors to send an email to international scholarships at trainu.ca in which they attach their respective recommendation letters, okay? The fifth point is to have a personal and family financial standing. We need you to explain how you're planning to pay for your education. Regardless of the scholarship, you will need to prove to the Canadian government that you have fundings to pay for your education because that is part of your visa application. So regardless of the scholarship, you still need to pay for your housing, for your meal plan, for your living expenses, for your books, okay? Because remember, the scholarship only covers the tuition fees. So we need to know that budget and we need to know how you're planning to pay for this and your numbers needs to be clear. Please be as detailed as possible in this section. It is very, very, very important. If you do, if let me tell you something, if you don't put enough information or do not explain this section clearly or your budget 
just doesn't make sense, then your application will be deeply hurt up to the point to be dismissed. Okay, I'm putting this clear and straight right now. If your numbers and your budget are not correct or they are just not adding up or the numbers, like if you tell me that your parents make, for example, $100,000 and they spend $200,000 and they're going to still pay for your education, that just doesn't make sense. We want your budget to make sense. We want your budget to be accurate. And if this is not happening, your application will be dismissed and we will not proceed even if you have completed everything else, okay? So this part is very, very important, okay? And the last part is please submit your application before February 15. There are no exceptions. You need to submit it before that. If you try to submit it later, we will not accept that. Okay, so where can you find application? Again, after you apply to Trent University, you will receive access to my Trent portal in which you will be able to see in the finance tab under the international section, the Trent International Scholarship and Application form. That is the form that you need to complete and it will, allow, it will um, say all the requirements that we want, how we want the essays, and of course the video essay, and you and you will have two Dropbox options for uploading your letter of recommendation, okay? So in, in case you are planning to do a video, we strongly recommend that maybe you can upload it to YouTube and you can do it just as a no published video and just copy the link and paste it in that section, or you can use Dropbox and just share the link with us. All right, uh, just to give you a general sense, here is a timeline of your application. Once again, the first thing that you need to do is to apply for admissions by February 1st. Remember, it can take up to two weeks to activate, sorry, up to one week to activate my, your MyTrain account. So if you apply later than that, you are risking a little bit of time that is precious for you to complete the application. And of course, if you want to apply to Trend and it's already February 14, uh, it's almost a guarantee that you will not have your MyTrend account activated on time and therefore you will miss the deadline for the application, okay? So February 1st, I think is one of the safest deadlines that you can have to apply for Trend. So in that way, in worst case scenario, you will have your uh, Trend ID ready by February 5th or maybe February 7th. And from that, you can used to have a couple of days, almost a week, to complete the application. After, you, after that, you need to activate my trend portal, which is part of the reason why you applied on February 1st. And you must submit your application for train international scholarships and awards by February 15. Once the committee gathers, we will deliver scholarship decisions by April 29th. Okay, so keep that in mind. Basically, your hard work is from now until February 15. After February 15, the scholarship committee, we get together and we deliver decisions on April 29th, okay? That is when we will guarantee you, you will know the decision for your scholarship. And once you receive an offer, we hope that is what you expect. You need to accept or decline your offer. Hopefully you accept it. Hopefully it's what you wanted and hopefully we can see you in Trent University in fall 2022, okay? So finally, since you are doing the effort of being here and I strongly appreciate people who are doing the extra mile for themselves, I am going to share with you my tips for you about a successful or a good application, okay? So you are all very, very welcome. The first thing that you need to do is to read and follow the instructions. You will not believe how many people skip the process and it deeply, deeply hurts their application. And due to the high volume of applications, this time we won't be flexible at all. And incomplete applications or applications that just doesn't get the point, they are going to be automatically dismissed. Okay, so you want to make sure that you are reading and you're following the the what we are requiring otherwise you are risking that 
your application will be dismissed immediately. All right. The second thing is to gather materials ahead of time. The least thing that you want is to be scrolling around, trying to obtain your letters of reference or trying to finish your essays. That is something that is a position that you want to avoid. So gather everything ahead of time. Even when you apply to Trent, that's when you should start asking for your letter of reference and be extremely clear to your professor saying that you need it by February 15. If I were you, I would say, you know, I need it by February 10. So you have five extra days just to be safe. The next, my next point is reflect on your experience. Create outstanding essays and take the opportunity of creating an essay video. Believe me, as part of the committee, we highly appreciate it. Someone who goes for the extra mail, it's outstanding. And that is something that we are looking for. Request the letters of recommendation early. That's again, going back to my point of gather the materials ahead of time. And my next bullet point is proofread your essays and application. The least that you want is to have an amazing application, but have having spelling errors. And if your application has spelling errors, believe me, it will also hurt your application. All right. And another point is use Microsoft Word and copy the text on your application. So sometimes the application form can be a little bit tricky, especially if you are new to Qualtrics form. So it is better to be safe and be familiar to what you have. So what I will do is I will copy the application into a Word essay and then complete the essay so in Word. And then once you are ready for your application to be submitted, just copy the essays back into the application and you should be good to go. And finally, the most important tip that I can give you is to complete the application before February 15. I am always sad to deliver the students the news that they there are no extensions. Even if the light went out during February 15, even if a light pole went down, even if something happened, we are not making any extensions. Okay? So please don't send us an email on February 16 saying or asking for an extension. We will automatically deny it. And let me be clear with you. It doesn't matter if the circumstance, we are not granting any extensions. So be safe and submit your application before February 15. And that's basically all. That's all what you need. Right now, what you need is to apply to Trend if you haven't done it and submit your application. That's all that matters right now. And with that being said, this marks the end of my presentation because I want to be brief up to the point and I want to allow time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please type in the Q&A section and I will answer them live. And the ones that do not betray for scholarships, they will be answered by Quran. All right. With that being said, thank you very much. And I highly appreciate that you have been here with us today. And I'll see you right now in the Q&A section. Thank you. Awesome. So we've got a lot of questions. Uh, Miguel, do you want to start with them or do you want me to? Uh... Yeah, I, I can start with, with them. Uh, I will mark them live and the ones that right. uh, um, are not regarding uh, scholarships, maybe they're regarding program specifics or graduate yeah. questions, you, you can help me to answer that Absolutely. and type in my friend. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. All right, let me see the first one. Okay, so the first one from Conan, you can answer my friend. So one question is, what are the prerequisites for qualifying for scholarship for BPA students? The answer is the old, it doesn't matter your program, the application and the qualifications are the same for everyone, for all our undergraduate students. So just as I said at the beginning, basically you need financial need, you need a statement of purpose, you need to have uh, to be a leader and you need to be outstanding academic achievement. High. You need to have high GPA, that counts a lot as well. Okay, so I have another question. If someone has applied to economics, 
what are your scholarship opportunities? Your scholarship opportunities, my friend, are our entrance scholarship for which you are automatically assessed as long as you have 80% or higher, you are automatically assessed for this scholarship. The higher your average is, the more money you will receive. And if, and if you're signed with us in September, you can apply for the three international scholarships and awards, which was the, the scholarship that I just presented. Miguel, as a follow-up question, uh, may I ask you something? I saw some question here, another student. So they have also applied for fall intake and uh, they have received the offer letter with the tuition fee written on it, the estimated tuition fee that we usually put it on. Now the student is asking, uh, but can I apply for the scholarship? We are slightly within the deadline for now. I can see that 14th is a deadline. So can the student go ahead and apply for the international scholarships and awards after receiving the offer letter for fall intake? Absolutely, yes, they can do it. What matters here is that you are applying for fall intake. This is your first time. And that's basically what matters. And, and that you complete application by February 15. That's all the things that matter at this moment. If you already have an admission letter by trend, congratulations, you have the first step. Then go now to my trend portal, go to the finances tab under the international section, you will see the application and complete it and you should be good to go. Awesome, thank you. Please continue. Absolutely, thank you, Koram. Good question. Uh, uh the terms the, the fees are to pay every year yes um i see a, a good question are ancillary fees paid every year or only for the first year that's a very good question uh ancillary fees are paid every year so every year you will pay this amount of fees because these ancillary fees include your your insurance it also include your bus pass um yeah, different fees for the university your gym membership all of that is included in this fee. So you will pay it once per year and generally you pay them in the fall. That's why the tuition fee in the fall is just a little bit higher than the tuition fee that you need to pay in winter. All righty. Um, so in this case, I see someone that is asking I'm requesting that their SAT scores to be considered for a scholarship as well. So here's the point. We do not consider the SAT score. Um, even if you request it, we will not review it. So we only really care about what we are asking for. And what you should focus right now is in completing your application, having an outside application, and believe me, if you take advantage of the video recording, you are going to be outstanding. So that is very important. I can I can express it enough. You take advantage of this recording video. We don't judge based on how good you're editing video, how good you are with transitions. We don't care. What we care is if you explain what we want and about the content. We care about content. We are about what else are there of recognition I have to say about prefer. All right, so, so someone is asking about the letter of reference. So in general, letter of reference, they tend to talk about the applicant or about the candidate, all right? So for example, the professor will explain how they see the candidate, what are the strengths, maybe what are some areas of improvement. Um, I believe me, when you ask for a professor, hi, can you provide me with a letter of reference? they most of the time tend to know what you're asking for and they will deliver to you, okay? There is no like a, a specific form. It's just a little bit of everything. You, we need to know who you are and especially for, from them that they have, been, they have been able to know you better than we have. Can we submit recommendation letters personally? Um, that's a good question. So letters of recommendation can be and should be submitted using the form. However, we do, in, we do acknowledge that professors, they feel they, in order to, be, to feel freely and due to some policies, they don't deliver the, the letters to the students. So in that case, they should send it to international scholarships at trainu.ca. 
And from that, we will um, grab them and add it to your file. So those are the two ways to submit your letter of recommendation. This is a great question. So after you have submitted the scholarship application, is this similar to all the scholarships or are there other applications after we complete this one? V beautiful question. Thank you very much for, uh, for asking this. Uh, when you complete the Train International Scholarship application, you are automatically con being considered for all our international scholarships, which are the Train International Levy Program, the Global Citizen Scholarship, the Scotiabank Scholarship, the Justin Chu Scholarship. So all of these scholarships, those for the, all of these, you are being considered when you're applying to using our form. If there are any external scholarship that you wish to be considered, then you will need to complete that form from that scholarship. But in general, for all the three international scholarships, that's when you get considered. Another good question. I like it. So if I send a video, will I need to write both essays? And the answer is no. So if you, for the first essay, there is no way around. You need to write an essay. So you need to type that one. But the second essay, that's the one that you can make a video. So in that one, instead of typing the essay in the application form, you can add the link to your video. Just here is the thing, just make sure you can access the video with that link because the least that you want is that we are not able to access the video with that link. And if we cannot access the video with that link, your application will be dismissed. So just make sure that everything is working and then you should be good to go. Uh, another good question. Someone has similar to the situation that Kuran was explaining. Someone has uh, already accepted their offer for a program here in Trent. Can they apply for a scholarship? The answer is yes, as long as you are starting with us in September and this is your first intake. If you are a current international student who started maybe now in winter and they want to, to apply for scholarships, you will not be able to do it. So as long as you have accepted the offer and you are starting with us in September, you're good to go. If, for example, maybe you're an international student who has accepted the offer to start in May, what you can do is to defer your offer to fall 2022, and then you will be eligible to apply for the scholarship. Again, this requires time, so I strongly suggest you do it as soon as possible if this is part of your plan. Provision for this. So someone is asking that the national examination results sometimes get released in late February. Are there prov provisions for this? So here is the thing. What you need to do is to apply to Trend before February 1st or to give enough time for you to, to prepare the scholarship application. But that doesn't mean that you need to have an admission result before February 15th. So you can be in the application status as applied status and complete the application form for, for the international scholarships, and we will assess your application. We are just going to wait for your re examination results to know about your academics. That's all that is going to happen. But the key here is that you apply for admission for Trent University. That is the key. Uh, it doesn't matter how late your results come. Of course, if it's in February, that's fine. If your results come in late, let's say July, that's when we will need to talk. But for now, you should be okay. So Miguel, if I may uh, follow up question again, uh, would we be able to assess a file based on predicted grades? Yes, uh, in this case it's admissions. Admissions, they will assess this file on predicted grades. And for from the, sorry? For scholarships. For scholarship, yes. Okay. Yes, because admissions, they provide that information to us. And that's when we check. So the predicted grades, and of course, here is the thing, especially for the entrance scholarship. Once you receive the, you will receive a notification about your entrance scholarship according to your predicted grades. But let's assume that maybe you are in the 80s and your predicted grades are that you are going to have 81 maybe. But then in the end of the day, COVID 
and different things happen and you end up in 79. Unfortunately, even though at the beginning you were offered an entrance scholarship, your final grades reflect that you didn't meet the criteria. So your, your, um, your entrance scholarship will be removed. However, if by that time you already had an international scholarship and award um, form, and sorry, result, we will respect that. We will respect whatever we are offering you. So the only one that will change is the entrance scholarship. And this is in the bad way, but in the, it can also change in the good way. Let's assume that you are in the 84 and your practical grades are that you are going to be 84. But in the end of the day, you really study a lot and you finish with 85.1. Then your entrance scholarship will jump from $1,000 to $1,500 because of that. All righty. I think that's very crucial. Uh information that most of us know. So uh, final grades can alter the entrance scholarship. However, if the prestigious scholarships have been offered to you already, then we are going to honor them irrespective of uh, the final results. Correct. We, t we tend to offer them, We're sorry, to honor them, unless there is a huge change, um, yes, a huge change. like a yes. very drastic change. That's when we sit down with the student and explain with that. With an asterisk, with an asterisk that, yes, yeah, subject. Exactly. That's like, if you have really overaccomplished at that moment, um, oh. there is a big change. Um, generally, in the bad way, that's when we, we, we need to talk. But hopefully, we don't reach that point. So another good question. What scholarships can an A-level student be eligible for? Uh, here is something that maybe it was implied, but I didn't explain it that much, and I will explain it now. It doesn't matter your curriculum. You can be from IB, you can be from the British curriculum, from the Indian curriculum, from the Mexican curriculum. It doesn't matter your curriculum. What matters is that you apply, and then once we have your grades and we have received those grades, we will convert it to the Canadian standard, and from that, we will evaluate you for scholarships. What exactly is a high GPA for the school? Another good question. I like how people are thinking. So a high GPA, it tends to be um, in the 80s. So I, according to Canada, so Canadian standard in the 80s, okay? So you can translate that to your appropriate curriculum, but if you are in the 80s, you are in the baseline. The better you go, the, the more ch chances you have. So in the past, we have a world big scholarship for students in the 90s, 95, even 100. And I have seen it and I was, wow, this is impressive. So uh, from 80 to above, it is a high GPA. 90 to above is a very high GPA. Do you need to send a copy for your academics from your previous school? Yes, that's correct. You will need that for admission and you will need that for the scholarships. So you could basically kill two birds with one stone, just send it to the admissions department and they will forward that to us. Sorry about that, thank you very much. And did you say that the scholarship committee prefer videos to text essay in the part where you talk about your extracurricular activities? I want to confirm that, yes. So in the, again, in the part of the of the application, there are two two essays. One essay that is your statement of purpose, what you want to achieve, what you want to do, and how Trent University is going to support you in this process. That is a 500 words essay. It needs to be beautiful, perfectly written with no grammar mistakes. And the second essay or video, it is about we want to get to know you better, what are your aspirations, what are your academic goals. Uh, what are your passions? Tell us more about yourself. Those are the two key things. And yes, for the second for the second essay, we strongly recommend a video as a part of the scholarship committee. It is a high bonus for you if you do the video. Once again, it doesn't matter how good you are editing. What matters is the content. And our second, the second question is: What about the financial essay? especially to breaking down how much budget is for the, each component of your living expenses as tuition. Okay, so for, for the finances, it's not really an essay. I would call it a budget 
what we want to know is how you are going to pay for your education with or without the scholarship. So if you're asking the scholarship it's because you need financial support to pay for the school for the school. But just keep in mind that the scholarships will only cover for the academic fees. And regardless if you receive a one a full scholarship, you will still need to pay for your living expenses, for your rent, for your water, for your food, for your um, different bills, phone bills. So you need to explain us how you're planning to pay for your education and your living expenses and how the scholarship will support you in this. Again, the numbers, they need to be clear. In the past, I have seen very, very uh, crazy things, such as, like I said before, like people earning 100000 and and spending $200,000 and then saying that their parents are going to support them to pay the university, that simply doesn't add up. The numbers doesn't match. And if the numbers doesn't match, I can tell you this time, the scholarship committee is not going to be um, chasing around trying to figure it out. We are just going to dismiss the application. So be especially mindful in this part. Can you still apply for scholarship if, you have already, if I am already a college student in your country? Yes. These scholarships apply also for transfer students. So you are going to be a transfer student. The only thing that you need to do is to come with, apply to trend to start in fall 2022 and you should be good to go. What scholarships are offered by diploma students, GCE students and other science scholarships? For now, we only have an entrance scholarship, an additional entrance scholarship for the IB diploma which is $1,000 in addition to the entrance scholarship. So let's assume that you have a GPA of 96, and from that you will receive $3,000, which is the maximum you can receive as a IB, sorry, as an entrance scholarship. And then since you are an IB student, you will receive $1,000 extra, so $4,000 in total. Can I attach the recommendation letters myself? So yes, you can attach it to the application form. Um, that is an option over there. Yeah, uh, the, the, high, the better your IB That's score is. So that is the threshold to start. So I close yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah, exactly, close to that. Again, the, the better your, it doesn't matter your your academic academic curriculum, the higher your average is, the better chances you have of scoring a good scholarship. We pay a lot of attention to academics and it is really important. So the higher your average is, the better for you. So to paraphrase that, in case I, we did not read out the question, I'm sorry, I cut you on that, Miguel. <laughs> yeah, but... so, uh, okay, so a 32 plus on an IB diploma is considered good to apply for a scholarship. Also remember, just like Miguel said, we do not look exclusively at your grades. It has to be a well-rounded profile. We're looking at community service, leadership potential, financial need, and academic excellence. So it is a complete profile that we look at and it is not solely navigated by your grades. Thank you for that, yeah. Oh, so <clears throat> thank you very much, Karam. That was great. Thank you for um, you helping want me to read out the questions? Uh, I can read out the questions. You can just answer them if you're okay. Okay, yeah, sure. I, I have marked some to be live. All right, thank you. All right, so the next question is, can, we, uh, can you get both the entrance and the international scholarship at the same time? And the answer is, Yes. Yes, exactly. So, you yeah. can get both of them at the same time. Uh, and of course, if you get the, the biggest scholarship, like for example, full scholarship, and you still, because your average was high, you are getting the entrance scholarship and then you are getting more than 27,000, then what is going to happen is that we are not going to take care of the entrance scholarship and everything is going to be covered by the main scholarship. Absolutely. So it's vital for every applicant to understand the entrance scholarship is something that you would be awarded by default based on your grades if you're eligible. Now, the Trent International Scholarships and Awards are something you apply for separately through the essay for fall intake only. So can you get both of them? They are separate. So yes, the answer in short is. However, also remember entrance scholarships are one time only. 
they are not going to be awarded to your next year. Correct, exactly. right, Miguel? You are perfectly correct. And that exactly leads us to, your, to our next, next question. Do you want to ask, ask it? Yeah, uh, yeah, so can you apply again for these scholarships in next semester? Okay. And the answer... Uh, is, oh, sorry. It's a bit of... No, no, it's okay. I, I was just thinking, please go ahead. Sorry, my apologies. The, the answer is yes, you, you can. However, it's, this only applies for the international scholarships and awards. If you, if you are applying for this, for the entrance scholarship, the answer is no. The entrance scholarship is a one-time scholarship that is going to be given to you during your first year, and that's it. The international scholarship and award, they are going to be awarded up to four years. So four years you are granted this. The only thing that you need to do in trend is to maintain an average above 77% and you need to be involved in the community and of course being in person here in Canada. All right, I think that's answered. So uh, another question to that is, do they need to apply again or would they be automatically uh, renewed for them based on their uh, performance and community involvement? They're automatically review, uh, renew based on their academic performance and community involvement. Awesome. So we've got a next question from Jasmine, and he says, I have a few awards that I would like the scholarship committee to consider as a part of my scholarship application. Could you please let me know where I can or should mention this because the scholarship application has no designated space for this? Perfect question. Um, I will add it in my video in my second essay. That's where we want to get you to know better. That's where you, you want to put all your awards, everything that you have been outstanding, all your passions, all your interests, everything over there, you should put it in that video or in that essay. All right, and uh, would we be requiring those documents for validation? Um, no, only if we if we, there is something that maybe we need a little bit more clarification, we will contact the student directly, but the student, right. they don't have the option to upload it. Awesome, then. All right, so, we are moving to the next question. Is the application process the same for four years? We've already addressed this. Uh, there is no application process for years after the first year because you only apply once to these. Correct. Okay. And so now has a question. How long does the essay have to be if it is video in form? I love this question. Thank you very much for our anonymous attendee for asking this. Um, so the length that we recommend for this video is a three minute video. It can be a three to five minutes video. We I strongly encourage no more than that. You don't want to have a whole TED talk video in which the committee cannot cannot fully see it. So three to five minutes, three to seven minutes, that will be the maximum that will Okay, awesome. Right, uh, now, I, I think we have answered this, but uh, can I get more than one scholarship to cover 100% of my expenses? Uh, do you want to take that or do you want me to answer that and save your throat? No worries, I can, I can take this. Um, so these scholars, scholarships are only for the academic part, so for tuition fees and ancillary fees. If you want to cover 100% of your expenses, my best advice is either you look for a scholarship back home or an external scholarship. Those are the only options. Trent University doesn't offer any scholarship that will cover 100% of your expenses. Thank you. Hmm. Interesting question. Uh, do I need to mention my parents' a salary and loan taken from home country in amounts under finance section of how I'm going to pay the tuition fee for one year? Yes. The answer yes. is yes. You need to be as clear as possible in your finance section. We want to know your income, your expenses, uh, your debts, of course, because that also influences how much money you will, they, your parents are able to support you. And I just, sorry, I, I didn't point out this clearly in my presentation, All, but, but it says in the application, all amounts, they need to be in Canadian dollars. Please don't put any amounts in your national currency, otherwise your application will be dismissed, okay? So put everything in Canadian dollars and don't make the, the scholarship committee do any change rate. 
Right. All right. Uh, yeah, we have kind of addressed it, but but this is a more direct question and covers a lot of aspects than uh, maybe we can. So a student needs the clarification on two ways by which you can submit the reference letters. What if the pr professors have printed, signed, and stamped the letters for you to scan and upload in the scholarship application directly yourself? Yes, so they, this is a perfect question. So what you can do here is we need to, to have the upload version, the digital version, so you will need to scan it. Um, scan the, uh, scan the um, cover letter, sorry, the reference letter and upload it. If your professor, they feel like they just don't want you to read it, what you can ask them is to scan it themselves and they can send it using our international admission, international scholarship email. Oh. Right, perfect, done. Okay, um, so we have already answered this. How do we inform whether or not our professors have provided uh, recommendation to try and for application because sometimes professors miswrite mail ID. So can we ask about it and confirm from Trent? So essentially another question to this is, is there a way students can get a confirmation that their application to scholarship is complete? Um, so for, for this part, this is a, a very good question. What is going to happen most likely is that we are going to review their application uh, after February 15. And if we don't find the cover letters for your professor, that's the only thing that we will ask. Um, that's the only part in which we're being uh, just a little bit flexible because we know that sometimes professors, they can forget. But the key here is that you have already submit, fully submit your application. And again, if we don't find the your cover letters by your professor, we will send you an email and we will ask you to send it as soon as possible within a week. Awesome. That's that's very cooperative on behalf of Trent. Uh, okay. Mm, how many international students get scholarships in a year except entrance scholarship? So that is a good question. So like like uh, like I said in my presentation, these scholarships they can range from two thousand dollars up to full tuition. So there is all this wide range where you can get this scholarship. So I can tell you that a very good amount of students they receive scholarship. Um, I cannot, due to privacy reasons, I cannot disclose the final numbers, but I can tell you that a very good number of international students, they get uh, scholarships, they can be from $2,000 up to um, the big scholarships. So it all depends. Always my best advice for you is please do your best for your application. Put everything in your application. So in that way, it's not on you and you know that you have to done your best. Absolutely. I think that's the best way forward. All right. Are they conditional entry programs? I, there's an academic question, so I'll skip it for now and I'll take it once we're done with scholarships. I'm from India and I've got 76% in 12th grade. Am I eligible for the scholarship? For the entrance, uh, I'm afraid not. We start 80% and above. I think that would also be uh, applicable to the Trent International Scholarships and Awards, if I'm correct, Miguel, right? Yes, almost. So we, we can still assess the application. However, um, by looking at the grade, I can already tell that the application is going to be deeply hurt um, by the side of the academics. Like Kuram said at the, at the, a couple of minutes ago, we look everything as a, as a whole. So if maybe you are good in one side, but you are very lacking in the area of academics, that is going to hurt your application. And you, you might not look for a very big scholarship, that's for sure. All right, thank you. Now, can the financial statement be in an essay form? I would like to answer that. Uh, we would not appreciate that. It is a budget breakdown and uh, an essay would be very subjective and would not be objective and would not be able to justify your finances to the team. Please be very objective about your applications because you want to make it easier for the team evaluating your scholarships to be objective about it and not get into issues where your scholarships can be dismissed or the entire form is dismissed. Thank you for that. Thank you, Kuram. Um, Great answer. Uh, I'm sorry, somebody is just, okay, missed that discourse from CBSC. Okay, I think what they're asking is uh, 80%. So uh, regardless of which 
whatever curriculum you're coming from, uh, the Canadian equivalent should be 80%. But if you're asking about CBSE, yes, it starts from 80%. Uh, for, for Pakistan, it is different. Uh, for uh, British curriculum, I think uh, Mikhail covered that. For British curriculum, it also starts. Uh, so as long as it goes 80% and above equivalent to Canadian, it's, uh, it's, it's good to go. Okay, right. we are done with this. Please, the tuition program. That's a very good question. I would like to take it. Yeah. Please, um, please take that. Very good question. So Daniel uh, Eshun is asking if the duration of the of their program is is six years, can they have the train scholarship and awards for during that time, and by bringing back my recruitment knowledge. I am almost certain this is a partnership with Swansea University. So it can be either the law and arts or law and business program or, or chemistry um, engineering degree with mm. Swansea University. So the answer is that's tricky because the scholarship will only cover you as long as you are in trend. So during your first two years, you're in trend and that's when you, we will cover your scholarship. However, when you are in Swansea University in the UK, that's when we will not cover the scholarship. And then you will be paying the Swansea fees. Once you are coming back to trend for your final years, that's when we cover you again. And when you when you divide both between the trend years and the Swansea years, you will see that it's four years in trend, two years in Swansea. All right, awesome. Now, uh, so we've done this. How do we write the financial statement? How much money do we need for personal expenses? I think I, I would like you to take that because uh, you've been a student at Trent yourself and you would have a better idea to guide students in that. Exactly. That, I think this is a great question. Uh, and just as Quran said, I was a student myself here in Trent. So in my personal experience, the most important part is your rent and your meal plan. So if you are planning to live on campus, then we have the option of you living in a double room or in a single room. Of course, a single room is more expensive or you can live in an annex, which is just a little bit cheaper. If you are coming to Durham, we only have one option and that will be uh, in a resident. So this is very important because that will change your, the, the dimension of your budget. And the second thing is when you move out outside campus to be off campus student, here, what matters is how much is going to be your rent. In my personal experience, before I was able to find back back in the time, I was able to find a, a rent that was around four hundred and fifty dollars, and that was great for me. And then I will add expenses for groceries. It depends if you like to cook, if you don't like to cook. Maybe if you like to cook a little bit more uh, healthy, or um, then you spend a little bit more money. If you are happy with ramen and fried noodles then you can save money, but of course it's going to be just a little bit unhealthy. So all of that, my estimate for international students between, between rent and living expenses, including phone bills, going out for the movies and everything, it will be 800 to $900 depending on your rent. That's how much it is tricky. Okay, so the cheaper your rent is, the more money you have for yourself. That is the, the final goal. Awesome. And uh, I think we've got last question um, for scholarships. Uh, and it also kind of, uh, there's a lot of questions coming around student loans. So does Trent help students get a loan if they're not awarded a scholarship? In other words, uh, is there a student loan facility that, that Trent can help uh, students with coming for programs, of course. That is a great question. And, and this is, I think, one of the most common questions we receive. Unfortunately, we don't have any partnership with any loan company or helping students getting a loan. And we don't offer loans for international students ourselves, okay? So um, here is the thing. A lot of people, what they do is they apply for a loan from back home. And you can include this in your scholarship. You can include that you're applying for a loan and you will receive a loan of that amount. And that will support us to, to know a little bit more. Um, but 
ourselves trained university and in general here any canadian bank they will not loan any money to international students that's i mean it, it's it's hard to say it as an international student i know that loans can make a difference between coming or not but unfortunately that is those are the rules of the banks those are the rules of the country and we cannot change it so my best advice if you're applying for a loan uh, get it from back home and include that in your application awesome and since uh, you mentioned that Miguel, i also wanted to understand since you were at trent and when you became a student at the campus uh, would there be a loans available once you're there or the status remains the same the status remains the same um even uh, yeah the status remain the same uh meanwhile you're an international student unfortunately due to the to the laws here the banks are not allowed to give you a a, a loan for um for your university yeah that's that's right that's the truth okay one last question before i have a request for you uh, do you also examine the students' eligibility based on past secondary school transcripts and not just the predicted anticipated? So what they're basically asking is, are you looking at the final year uh, results or do you also take into consideration uh, your uh, maybe O levels or AS levels or 10th grades, 11th grade? In general, we, we do exactly what admissions does and we basically take care or we mainly focus in your last year. So that's what we are caring for. And that is in terms of academics, in terms of your academic involvement or community involvement, we look into your last three years. Awesome. And with that, I have one request. A lot of it has been coming around the financial budgeting. Uh, may I please request you to just take us once again through the financial budgeting slide, if you, uh, if you can, please. I think Absolutely, I'm my friend. Thank you very much for pointing this out. I love it. Just, I'm just going to open my presentation for one more time. Right, and uh, while you're doing that, there's a question, would a flat tuition fee imply our tuition is going to remain the same throughout the few years? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe not, because uh, fees, uh, we renewed or, or we upgraded our fees after a very long duration uh, last year for fall. So, well, however, if, if there are some changes and there can definitely be uh, a change in tuition fee or the entire uh, fee that you're looking at. But like I said, maybe and maybe not. So there's no definite answer to that. Exactly. So that is that is a good point. Thank you, um, Kuram. Uh, yes. So we don't know. We don't know the fees for next year. We don't know the fees, how they're going to change in four years. So it all depends on almost year by year. And here is the requested slide. So here you can see in the first chart, that is the undergraduate program and the tuition fees 24,250 and ciliary fees 2,800. And the housing and meals, again, this is for a year. We're budgeting for a year. So like I said, you can budget for almost $900, $800, $900 up to $1,000. And here it depends on your um, housing. If you decide to live in residence or maybe you decide to live off campus, Books and supplies, it depends if you are buying brand new books. Brand new books can be expensive up to $100 or $200. If you, my best advice is if your class doesn't require an access code, then buy the used book. A lot of students, they resell their used books and for a way, way cheaper price. And then for personal expenses, you can buy it for $1,500 to $2,000. That's a general budget. Awesome. I think that does it. And also, uh, uh, if not too much, would you like to talk about the financial budgeting when it comes to the scholarship application? Like, how do they break down their expenses when they have to show? Yes. Um, so when they are doing their finances in their in their application, something very similar to this would be appreciated. Of course, this this will be your expenses. What we want to know are, are your incomes as well. So how much your parents are making. Again, everything they need to be in Canadian. So how much is your parent making? Your dad, your mom, uh, what are their expenses? What are your ex planet expenses in Canada, which will be this budget? What are your current expenses back home? Maybe 
your parents are also paying for your brother and sister going abroad. So we need to explain, you need to explain all of that. And from that, you need to explain how you're planning to pay for your education, how you're planning to pay for your living expenses. That is what we're looking for. Awesome. With that, we kind of come come to an end of the questions. Um, just, just as a refresher, I think that question came up again. Where can the scholarship application form be found? It is on your MyTrend portal under finances. You would find the Trent International Scholarships and Awards form. Also, uh, there is no one particular scholarship that you should be interested or targeting. Like, for example, you want to target Justin Chu scholarship because it looks big. Please don't do that. You are essentially applying for the entire package and you do not know which one you would be awarded because that is the uh, International Scholarships Division's decision that they would be taking. Uh, exactly. I'll let Miguel talk more about that if we ask you. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we look into what, for which scholarships you are eligible yeah, according to your criteria. And um, from that, we assign the best scholarship possible for you and we send you an offer. And hopefully you can accept it and we are gathered together in September. Right, awesome. Uh, so just remember, please, the deadline to apply is February 14th, if not, not wrong. 15th, 15, February 15th. Uh, February 15th. Fall intake only, February 15th. And that's all you need. It doesn't matter if you receive the offer letter for fall already or not. As long as you're within the deadline of February 15th, then you can get that complete application essay in. You would be considered. It does not matter if you're a college student coming for a UG program or you're a fresh student coming for a UG program. How, as long as you're the fall intake student, you would be eligible to apply for these scholarships. Entrance scholarships and international scholarship awards are different. Entrance scholarships are given to you by default based on your grades, 80% and above, Canadian equivalent. Trent International Scholarships and Awards is what Miguel has been talking about for so long. You required the essay. That sums it up and back to you, Miguel, to take it from here. Perfect. Thank you, Kuram. Yes, I just want to point out that is um, February 15, Canadian time, 11.59 Canadian time PM. Okay. So some people are living uh, maybe a little bit ahead of us. Some people living a little bit behind us, just keep that in mind. Be safe, send it on February 14. That's my best advice. And with that being said, I have to run for now, but it has been a pleasure to be with you uh, in this meeting, in this session. Thank you very much for all your wonderful questions. We are wishing you the best of luck, but in general, what I wish you is to create a very, very good application. That's the best that I can wish you at this moment. Um, Kuram, it has been such a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much for your time. Any last words, my friend? Oh, well, uh, so I just wish uh, luck to everyone. And like Miguel said, put your best foot forward, put your best effort. Do not care about how much you're going to get, what your grades are. As long as you think that you've done best in all spheres, just, just put them out on the application essay and keep your fingers crossed. That's all. Perfect. Thank you very much, Koram. And thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye Goodbye. For now. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Koram. Thank you, Bye for now. Bye.